y'all welcome back to another video in this video we're reacting to another article and this is ranking 39 nfl quarterbacks where does matthew stafford rank now this is going to be super exciting i started to read it but i, I was trying to stop myself because i knew i had to stop myself that way i could react to it with you guys i couldn't read too much of it so i really don't know what it's about but I had to stop myself because this one does seem really exciting. And, uh, you know, I was going to do one of these. So if you guys want to comment down below, if you guys want to see me do like a tier list on quarterbacks, I can. I did one last off season, I believe. Some people got, got heated about that one. Actually, you know what? I should react to my old one and see how it played out. That would be cool. I may do that. But if you want to see that, let me know. But we're going to be reacting to this one. Now, like I said, I had to stop myself. But, you know, the art it was hard. The article was talking. He was like, come on, man. Keep reading. Keep reading. I was like, nope. Got to get the camera on. So that's what we're doing. Um, you know, like sometimes like you're sitting there, you see that brownie and you're like, oh snap, nah, I can't eat that. You know what I mean? Like that ain't good for me. The brownie's talking to you and he's like, come on, man, we got cookies. You know what I'm saying? And you're like, oh, we got cookies and brownies? So you're, okay, stop. Let's get into this article. Here's ranking 39 uh, quarterbacks. Okay, I'm not sure exactly. They have like a system here. So they're not just going opinion, I don't think. So let's get into it. We would say that Stafford is a second tier player, if not for some spectacular plays that he continues to make at 31 years. Well, he's 32 now. Happy birthday. The GOAT. Sorry. I know some people got mad about that too. I'm sorry. Uh, if you watched the Kansas City Chiefs game um, and didn't come away knowing Stafford can hang with the um, with another elite quarterback, you didn't watch. Thank you. Round of applause. Whoever Who wrote this? Come here. Michael. Michael, you're that dude, man. Like, that's facts. That game was so – that one pass, man, that, that might have been my favorite moment of the whole season when he fit that between three defenders. That was so beautiful. Oh, and that's what he talks about. Let's get it. Um, the throw – oh, he said four defenders, so maybe I was a little off. The Kenny Galladay was a few quarterbacks could ever make. That's facts, man. I don't know how he fit that in. If you missed it, go look it up. Stafford's highlights versus the Chiefs. It's like it's probably in the third quarter. It was beautiful. Few quarterbacks convince, convince the media and NFL fans in general that a team isn't a really a reflection of a quarterback. That's true, right? Okay, let's get into it. The question always seems to be, why do teams win big games? The answer always seems to be, they have a great quarterback. Likewise, how do we know that a, that a quarterback is great? It is answered with, his team wins big games. Okay, so we need to remove the ability to discuss the topic in such circular um, in binary terms. Okay, so I see what they're doing there a little bit, right? That's true. A lot of people look at it pretty simply. Um, I know that's not how I look at it because I don't think how we perform is just on Stafford, right? Now, basketball is a little bit different because, you know, you can look at a player and be like, all right, he only had like five points and he's their best player. He needs to play better. Now, if Stafford was playing awful, then it's like, okay, yeah, you know, you are the quarterback. You have a lot of impact on this game, but he's playing good and they're still losing and they're losing because they can't stop anybody. That's a completely different thing. Um, so for the purpose of doing so, let's look at the concept of defense adjusted value over average rating. Big words. It says, which essentially measures a player or team versus the other teams or players in the same situation adjusted for quality uh, of an opponent. So the ratings are percentages. The higher the percentage, the more above average your team, unit, or player is. Okay, interesting. Another analytics measurement is called defense adjusted yards uh, above replacement. For short, Football Outsiders website characterized their DVOA and DYAR ratings this way. The simple version, DYAR, means a quarterback with more total value. D so like value to their team, I guess, kind of like the MVP of their team. DVOA means a quarterback with more value per play. Okay, so similar, right? Uh, they also include total quarterback rating, QBR. We know about that one, which incorporates both measures to give the accurate, to give more accurate way to judge an individual quarterback. I love that. I love that number. Football Outsiders um, displays their findings. Link here. Oh, I don't. I don't need to click that link. So, if you wish to dispute methodology, methodology is that a thing? Okay, take it up with them. However, these analytics are what drive modern decision makers like Detroit Lions Vice President and General Manager Bob Quinn. If you are not a believer, open your mind and take in what we are about to lay down. Oh, I'm, I'm actually getting hype. I need to calm down. Ranking the top 34 quarterbacks, Stafford ranks fourth in DVOA behind Drew Brees, Lamar Jackson, and Patrick Mahomes. Okay, keep it going with 28.8% DVO rating. At this point, if you are a non-believer, you've looked at the stats and decided um, on a talking point that tries to explain the data away. Like, it's just one year. However, Stafford has not been ranked outside the top 10 in DVOA, a measure of value per play, or its accompanying partner, DYAR, -D all these letters are confusing me, in the last five years. There are asterisk. The asterisk, I think that's how you say that, is his 2018, which you should look at the team factors section of this article to understand better. Okay. In 2018, he was ranked um, at numbers 20 and 21, respectively. 
Uh, every year in the last five, Stafford was top 10 performer. His total QBR was number five last year. Pretty elite company, huh? Okay, now let me say this. 2018 was definitely not his best year, but keep in mind, he was with Jim Bob Cooter. And I know some of y'all still don't like Stafford, but hey, I know those people, those same people, didn't think that Jim Bob Cooter was going I don't know one person that thinks Jim Bob Cooter was getting it done. So let me just point that out there, okay? That kind of performance over time shows what we intend to show. That few quarterbacks have been better or more valuable over the last five years, including right up to this past season. Without further ado, here are the here are rankings of 39 NFL quarterbacks that deserve starting consideration in our opinion and backed up with production and analytics as their base. That's why I like to hear. I know people like analytics. We're going to some analytics here. Okay, tier one. The six players display elite physical skill, consistency, and ability to produce. Matthew Stafford. Tom Brady, Russell Wilson, Matt Ryan, Patrick Mahomes, and Lamar Jackson. Ha <laughs> ha! Whose name do we did not see? Whose name do we did not see? Did not see? Aaron Rodgers. Where's Aaron Rodgers at, my boy? No, but seriously, forget that. This is where I put him in company, too. Like, he's this kind of guy, okay? Let's hear the analytics. There's always a tough, um, tough designation to qualify, but beside analytics, these guys give their teams the best chance to win every time they're on the field. That's facts. I mean, 3-4-1, 0-8, okay, I don't know. Maybe I'm missing some. Uh, we selected these players due to either substantial production in a short window or consistency over the last five years where we can obviously Mahomes and Jackson. Okay, yeah, that's what I was going to say. They're kind of young. Don't have a five-year window to examine, but have proven that they are elite. Yeah, that's true. I'll give them that. I'll give them that. We'll see how they are in the next five years. I would say I believe Mahomes still going to be balling, especially if he's still in the same offense. Um, Lamar Jackson, maybe a little bit down, but he's still a really good player. So I'm not even going to argue with those. These players have played... Um, and their level of play has stayed near the top of individual DVOA, DYAR, QBR, and general NFL quarterback statistical production. This is good stuff. No Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, or Big Ben, which is kind of surprising. I thought Big Ben would be in there. Uh, may trouble some of you, but none none were in the top 10 of QBR or basic passing yardage sets. Okay, well, Big Ben was hurt too, so I'll give him that. But they are looking at the last five years. Perhaps you don't like Deshaun Watson missing from this list. Although he ranks seventh in QBR, his overall production just missed a cutoff. Okay, but hey, Deshaun Watson's still a baller. I mean, just because you're not in this cutoff does not mean you're still not a good player. But you're just not Stafford. Okay, stop. Um, Matt, Matt Ryan's QBR was 14th. However, his production remains at the top in the NFL. He's in danger of falling into the second tier if his production slips. But he has nine 4,000 passing yard seasons in a row. That bumps him into the top tier to us. And Brady is similar boat statistically. You cannot have Brady in tier one. I don't care how old this guy is. Brady looks like he's on his way down the list um but is just one year removed from a championship and still had a strong statistical career you know it's he's like 48 it don't even matter what what he's in um we don't believe that wilson jackson or mahomes need further explanation as all their prime and produce big numbers even if jackson and mahomes have similar career samples to work with russell wilson in particular has produced in a very similar way stafford although he creates a bit more with his foot speed and improvised vision ability okay we're gonna not mess with that word I'll give it to Russell Wilson. He's a legend. He's he's a legend. He's a dog. Tier two, really good quarterbacks, some of whom used to be elite. Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Watson, Carson Wentz, Dak Prescott, Kirk Cousins, Philip Rivers, Ben Roethlisberger. Okay, I'm down with this. I'm not. I can't think of anybody that's missing. I mean, I think some people would think Cam Newton should be here. I don't think so, but let's see. Uh, the toughest part about this list is that it contains too many men who have combined four Super Bowl rings, who are now being looked at differently due to diminishing skill sets. And you know what? That happens. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not, I don't like Aaron Rodgers, but he was a baller. But the problem is he's getting older. And he's he's not going to be the same player. Drew Brees the same way. It's, it's sad to see Drew Brees, but he's still a legend, man. I'm I'm getting off topic. Um, the other interesting thing is that other players on this list who are ascending into elite category if they improve or continue to prove at a top level. Okay, Some players like Cousins and Rivers may never ascend uh, any higher but deserve to be included in a list of very good field generals. Okay, I think that's fair. Both produce bigger numbers but hang just beneath the elite status, right? Cousins has a very high DYAR and DVOA, ranked 7 and 10 respectively, but has never consistently proved. Okay, I think that's fair. He's never consistently uh, produced. So, if you guys are thinking it's just winning losses, it's not. There's way more to that, and that's why I love this so far. Prescott, although has become an elite runner in the backfield, still has been considered the up-and-coming category due to his top six rank in every area. Um, he has 4,902 yards passing, but also at top 10 analytics 
numbers in his total QBR. Watson has had two strong statistical years in a row and is also in the top 10 in total QBR. He is right on the borderline being an elite quarterback as well. I think that's fair. You can put Watson in elite. I won't even be mad. Watson with um, more very good years under his belt could easily be the upper echelon. I can read that as soon as next year. Okay, that's fair. Let's start skimming through these. All right, solid starters. Okay, let's see. Derek Carr, Jimmy Garoppolo, Cam Newton, Kyler Murray, Ryan Tannehill, Jacoby Brissett, Baker Mayfield, Josh Allen, Alex Smith, Jared Goff. Okay, that's fair. It's crazy because Jared Goff looked like, we, like the thought was he was going to be a league quarterback, and then that just fell quick. Let's skim through this a little bit. Um, okay, step higher into the solid starter, but combination of stats and analytics um, will help us aside. Ryan Tannehill had a great postseason, but, it, you know, he barely threw the football. Uh, Kyler Murray is a player that landed. Now, Kyler Murray is really young, so I think he, you know, he could definitely move up. Baker Mayfield is another player to start off high. He's really good as a rookie. Terrible last year. I'll just say it like that. <laughs> Alex, well, just, he just he turned the ball over a lot. Alex Smith at times uh, has performed. They're both young. Alex Smith has performed like a very good quarterback. He's currently trying to make a physical comeback after a devastating uh, leg injury. That's unfortunate. Garoppolo led his team to the Super Bowl, right? Down the top. Not great, but, you know, he's, he's won, got to the Super Bowl. Derek Carr. Derek Carr was so good one year. He almost won the MVP, didn't he? And then, oh, I don't know what happened. Borderline starters. Oof, that's, that's an ouch. Joe Flacco, Jameis Winston, Mitchell Trubisky, Gardner Minshew, Sam Darnold, Daniel Jones, Nick. Okay, I feel like Daniel Jones will be out of here soon. I don't know about Sam Darnold, man. Nick Foles is kind of an interesting one. Case Keenum, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Marcus Merritt. That's crazy for Marcus. Gardner Minshew, he could be out there soon. Jameis Winston, I think he's uh, him and Trubisky, man. Okay, let's just skip to, let, to tier five. Um, journeyman, good backup types, unproven. Okay. Dwayne Haskins, I think that's fair, right? He didn't have a good season, but he's so young. Kyle Allen, yikes. Uh, Josh Rosen, well, that's tough for Josh Rosen, man. What the heck happened there? Drew Locke and Andy Dalton, so a lot of young players on here. Detroit Lions team factors. All right, let's get into it. In an effort to look at the situation, oh my gosh, they're like putting all my numbers that I look look at into one. I love this. Okay. In an effort to look at a situation easier, next we will list the, ma the main options that Stafford had around him. Can we get a round of applause? If you're at home watching this, start clapping, please, if you're about this. 2015, receiving leaders, Calvin Johnson, 1,200. Received Calvin Johnson was 11. We know Golden Tate was really good. Theo Riddick did his thing. Um, 697 yards. Rushing leader, Amir Abdullah, with 597. That's kind of disgusting. And two touchdowns, yikes. Offensive coordinator, Joe Lombardi, Jim Bob Cooter. Uh, Lions went 7-9. 2016, Golden Tate was receiving there over 1,000 yards. Marvin Jones, 930. Eric Ebron, 711. Uh, Anquan Bolden, 584. I love the Anquan Bolden. Theo Riddick, 357 yards rushing. That was the leader, 350 rushing yards. Oh, that's not good. 2017, Golden Tate, another 1,000 yards. And Marvin Jones. Eric Ebron, 574. Kenny Galladay, 477. He's starting to emerge, man. That's his first year, right? Amir Abdullah, 552. Gosh, that's disgusting, man. We can't. Like, we can't run the football, dog. 2018, we started to get it going. Levine Toilolo, uh, Kenny Galladay gets to the 1,000. Marvin Jones, 500. Theo Riddick, 380. Rushing leader, carry on, 641. Not bad. Jim Bob Cooter lines went 6-10 and 10 under Matt Patricia. And then in 2019, look at Galladay. We all know about last year. Daryl Bevel. Now let's look at Stafford's production given his inconsistent cast. All right. Here are, we have accumulated Stafford stats, averaged them out over a five year, look back and help interpret the numbers. Okay, if you want to look at portfolio reference, you can click right here. The link should be in the description um, to this article. Matthew Stafford passing yards in the last five years, 19,311 or average 268.2 yards a game, 4,291 per season. Nice, nice. Okay, we know he was averaging over th um, 300 yards passing this season before he got hurt. Let me just throw that out there. Yeah, ridiculous, right? More than the Chiefs did. Uh, completion percentage, 700, 1,711 completions on uh, 2,500 attempts, 65.9%, so basically 66. Touchdowns, 125 to 49. 20 sets, so basically 28 touchdowns and 11 picks. Okay, not bad. Average five-year stat line, 4,300 passing yards, 28 touchdowns, 11 picks, and 66% completion. If you simply doubled Stafford's eight games um, from 2019, which would have been ridiculous. I mean, come on, dog. Look at those numbers. I think this would have led the NFL, 38 touchdowns. Lamar Jackson's video game MVP stat line. Dog, that's ridiculous. All pro. I mean, look at Stafford, man. Look at Stafford. More touchdowns. Yeah, he would have let in touchdowns. Dude, come on. Come on, dog. That doesn't... Regardless of numbers that a person may look at, averages... Um, 2018 could again. It shouldn't be a long time to see a resemblance between Stafford Wilson and Jack Jackson in production. They don't play the same position. They don't play this the position the same way, uh, but they all do it at an elite level. That's fair. Is a valid point to discuss his... 
his slightly higher interception ratio than his younger, I would give him that. Yeah, he does throw some picks. I would say when he was young, he threw a lot of picks. Um, you know, but I also think you have to keep in mind what he came into. You know, he was trying to make plays, and he was he was kind of dangerous with the ball. But, hey, I mean, that's that's why we love watching him. Applying the eye test to both sets of numbers, um, they'll write, okay, his ranking fifth in quarterback rating, data analytic. Right now, Stafford is playing quarterback as well as almost any quarterback in the league or any player in the league. Stafford is Stafford is the lead quarterback, and the Detroit Lions should continue to improve his cast, give him a better run game, and allow him to shine in the centerpiece of a team. It's just your our opinion, though. What do we know? I love this. Let's, is there comments? Can we read some comments? I don't know if there are comments. It's just a, what is that, just a D? Like, come on, dog. Nope, other than that. Okay, um, there are comments. Oh, okay, let's get it. All you talk about is how Stafford can squeeze a pass, and that is good. Okay, I'm interested to see this. Um, but that's the only pass he's good at. Okay. Uh, he can't and never was any good at throwing touch passes. Okay, I'm disagreeing with you on that one. Okay, my boy, he wasn't great before. I mean, he just bombed it. He's gotten a lot better. I mean, if you are just, this is a blind statement, obviously. If you watched, my favorite one was when he threw it to Golden Tate versus Dallas. Was it Tate? I will never forget that. I, well, I guess I did forget a little bit of it. But when we threw that dot... And Dallas ended up winning because they had that dot to the running back, which was whack because Davis didn't keep up. That was the most beautiful. Right over the corner, right? In, he's definitely gotten a lot better. As big a season, I will give you that. Now, that's not even an argument. Uh, the ones up and over the defense that drops in or leads the receiver. Okay, he's still talking about that. The elite quarterbacks can throw that ball. Okay, so there's literally no stats to this. He's the same stuff. All right, he won the Super Bowl, period. He's an amazing quarterback, especially for his age. Say that he's very human this year was the dumbest comment ever. He missed two games. He'll, wait, what is this? Okay, I'm not sure what he's talking about. Okay. All right, so it looks like these dudes are just going at it. Um, Wow. Though I thought he played well in the circumstance and leading the pass, I was starting to question that, but your article makes sense to me. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good stuff. Yeah, thanks is obviously issue moving forward. Okay, uh, Mike, I see Mike Mahomes should have his own tier two levels above the rest Ooh, uh, i don't know uh Mahomes is great i'll give him that and he's in a great situation he said not really dang this dude just roasted all right stuff is interesting whatever you guys can comment below because those are the only real comments that matter to me so there you go comment below if you guys are still um you know you still want to have it out here i honestly respect all opinions and if you want to well most opinions some of them are just too wild i'm like nah dog but if you do want to get stafford out here you want to get a new quarterback i can respect that I really can if you're saying Tua, but I'm not with you on that. Let's keep that simple. So there you go. I thought this was really interesting. Shout out to Michael Kirkland. The link to this article should be in the description. I thought it was super interesting, and he kind of just summed up a lot of videos that I put together into one, and I absolutely loved it. Let me know your thoughts, comments below. Thank you for watching, and I am out.